And joining me on the podcast and on video is Andrew Webb, CEO of Extruded Pharmaceuticals. Andrew, thanks for joining me. Good morning, Justin. Good to talk to you. Yeah, brand new company about the list. Very exciting technology. And we'll get get into that in a bit if you explain to me how it works. Uh, but first of all, give us an overview of Extruded Pharmaceuticals. What does the company do, Andrew? Um, well, EPL is uh, a pharmaceutical company, as you imagine. Uh, we're focused on drug delivery, specifically improving the, the delivery of chemotherapy drugs to solid tumours. And this the idea being to improve the effectiveness of the drug and importantly, improve outcomes for patients. The technology we have enables chemotherapy drugs to be delivered locally at the site of the tumour. And this is the key difference. Today, most drugs are given either intravenously or by mouth as a tablet. Local delivery is really important. It ensures the drug gets to where it needs to be. And also importantly, we can use a lower quantity of drug. And this is key then because we could hopefully reduce the adverse side effects that uh, is so common with chemotherapy. So what we've done, we've developed a technology called Chemoseed. Uh, it enables controlled release, so the drug is active for uh, the tumour site for probably anything between a week and a month. And this is, a, this is a significant difference in what we can achieve here. Drug delivery has an attractive profile as, as a business as well compared to drug discovery. So from a product development perspective, you know, we're improving the delivery of drugs that have already been reg- had regulatory approval and clearly de-risking and expediting the, the programme overall. So what we're doing, we have a lead programme and that's focused on brain tumour. Uh, not many people are aware, brain tumour is the leading cause of cancer in young children and adults under the age of 40. And uh, so it's really is important. There's probably some, up to maybe 16,000 cases a year in the, in the UK. And typically, certainly in the high-grade glioma uh, indications, such as most severe being glioblastoma, you know, life expectancy really is uh, 12, some 12 to 15 months. So what we're doing with our technology, we wanted to, to deliver the current chemotherapy drugs. Uh, we're using to use irinotecan. It's a well-known, well-understood drug. It's still used in first line in bowel cancer. And our objective clearly is to improve the outcome for patients and uh, with the, in terms of the drug's effectiveness. Yeah. So, okay. So we'll get a bit more into that, but very targeted sort of mm. delivery system. Okay. And tell us about yourself, Andrew. I mean, uh, I've not spoken to you before. Tell us, uh, you know, how you come, you know, from where you are, what you've been doing and how you come to be here right today. Yeah. Thanks for your interest. Um, well, I've been in uh, life science, health, health care for well, well over 30 years. Um, my career, I go back to being a, a research scientist at uh, what was now, what was Glax, what is now GlaxoSmithKline uh, back, back in the day. So after a good few years in preclinical research, I then decided that my interest really was on the business side. So I moved into commercial with uh, with GE Healthcare, and my subsequent career took on a more entrepreneurial and investment um, type role. My first startup I was involved in was uh, um, I was commercial director at DXS, we're a Manchester-based diagnostic company um, in the field of what called personalised healthcare, and again it was in the oncology space. That company we uh, we ran for some eight and a half years. We sold to Cargen for eighty million. Our lead investor made thirteen times their, their investment. But what was that, that part of my career gave was really exciting because I, I then had a first experience of working in, with um, in glioblastoma, and uh, so I was particularly excited. Now, when I got the opportunity to uh, to work with Extruded, um, it was uh, you know knowing the how devastating brain cancer is. Uh, and there's been no improvements in the standard of care for decades. You know, our current clinical protocol was established probably back in 2005, and uh, no progress has been made since. So we really have, uh, this is, a, you know, we have a robust rationale now for chemistry, the technology, you know, to improve patient outcomes. So this transaction we've uh, it's been lined up with the more minerals. It, it doesn't require a placement. There's sufficient funding there to take us through to clinical trials, and that, it's a really special position to be in. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so uh, this is very interesting. So the, the technology is called Chemo Seed, and it sort of suggests right. what it sort of does. But explain a bit more about it, how it works then. Um, Chemo Seed was uh, the invention of uh, our chief scientist, uh, Dr. Chris McConville. Uh, Chris is the, as an associate professor at the University of Birmingham. Uh, Chris's background and track record is, is amazing. His uh, expertise is in drug formulation and delivery. Uh, but importantly, in translational research, you know, he, his passion is to take is to take really great technologies out of research and in, through it into patients and to, and to commercialization. 
So he, he he came up with Chemo Seed, oh, probably some years back, probably 2016. Chemo Seed is actually a small, tiny polymer rod. It's about to the size of a grain of rice. And it's made from a biocompatible and biodegradable polymer, uh, which is already widely used in, uh, in, in medical applications. What is, what is unique here is each Chemo Seed carries the drug. It's incorporated into it. And it can dispense it, the the uh, the drug over on a controlled basis over a period of probably some you know seven to thirty five days. This is clearly is unique. We have a uh, far number of patents across uh, key jurisdictions, obviously, in order to to protect the uh, uh, intellectual property. But in terms of in the short term, you know, Chris has done a lot of work in, in preclinical. We've got uh, uh, an animal model with no recurrence, no treatment recurrence at one hundred and forty eight days. And then uh, this indication has already been carried out in the clinic. So Chris undertook a phase one study uh, using the drug in vena TCAM in uh, glioblastoma patients. Uh, it was a drug eluting bead. It was a precursor to, to chemo seed, but it did demonstrate safe and efficacious use. And that was really important. So now we're fully aligned now to move into phase two and uh, clinical trials are, are next. And this is, you know, we do see as a key inflection point for the value of the business. Yeah. So can you explain currently, uh, because there's a company listed, there's a sort of similar thing, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm not an expert in this field, but currently standard of care for, you know, this, this kind of cancer is what? It's just uh, courses of chemotherapy or, or taking pills? Or what happens? Um, the standard of care, is, as I say, has been unchanged for many years. It actually it's, it's initially starts with uh, a surgical intervention. So they surgically remove the tumour. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the, the problems that you get with it is, is because the build up of pressure in the brain, so that that's removed. Uh, and um, and at that point, then the patient then will, will have a bit of recovery, and they're gone to a, a course of uh, chemotherapy and radiotherapy. And uh, that that is the the, the core in the core uh, protocol at this point. Yeah, yeah, and and so and so just explain then. So the advantages of chemo seed is what compared to that. Well, what we do is we, we, we once the tumor has been removed, the patient sadly, because of the, the operation takes place in the brain, it's not possible to remove all of the tumor tissue. There will mm -hmm. always be a, a residual amount, and that can be visualized through through the through the surgery. So, what what did this happen? We've been working closely with the neurosurgeons at the Queen Elizabeth uh, Hospital in Birmingham, and it means that the the seeds can be implanted, chemo seed can be implanted into that residual tumor margin. Where those residual cells are, and before the patients close up, those 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 that residual margin is already being treated, and will be for a sustained period, and that really is is, is what's key here. Mm -hmm. So we're moving into a, a clinical trial. The Queen of them in uh, hospital is running te the Tessagel brain matrix trial, and that's the next step because we're working with them. We've been approved to enter the trial, and it will be a phase two, and it will be a registration trial, and that can take us th through to commercialization. Wow. Uh, our plans are, and the funding we will secure through this transaction could take us through to uh, a 50 patient study by the hopefully by the end of next year. Yeah, well, there's another company I know I'm aware of that's listed. I don't know if you're aware of Avacta because, but uh, they do. A, a, I'm assuming like, well, I'm, I'm no expert, but it's a, a similar kind of targeted. They, they call it the the precision platform, and it's they talk about sort of a warhead delivery system. I mean, are you aware of those? Is, is that is it any parallels we can draw with this? Is it similar to that or different in any way? Uh, I have. Uh, I don't. I can't say I know a factor well. I know. I know of them. I think they have a you know a neat a neat technology. They they're also uh, aligned in the factors where you know targeting tumors and in a way that you can avoid the systemic side effects of uh, of chemotherapy. And I think the the what they've created is uh, is, uh, is is a smart is a smart molecule. I think the key difference is from from our side we're we're taking a, a known drug. Uh, it's well understood. It's trusted. It's still valued in uh, as a chemotherapeutic, and we're taking it and formulating it so we can deliver it directly into the into the tumor. And I think that's uh, that's probably the, the the key difference from our side. But there are there are some parallels. I think targeted therapies are certainly the the, the future in, in oncology. Yeah, yeah. So that's very interesting, Nick. You say you're obviously taking a drug that's you know safe and efficacious there, and you're using that. Uh, and putting it to, in, with your delivery system, which is very targeted and and can uh, and can carry on working for, for yes. days, months, weeks after after it's implanted. Yeah. So that's very interesting. Okay, so so what's just explain then? So you did mention it there, but where are you now, and what's the next steps in the development process of this? 
Um, next steps in the development is that uh, you know we're looking to um, take take this through and in, in, say it's a clinical trial is is absolutely where where we're going, and that's why the transaction is 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 so so important to us. You know, we we can uh, the, the the studies won't will probably take two years. Uh, you know, and we can sort of line of sight of uh, of uh, uh, under what what is termed orph orphan drug. We can get an expedited expedited review with uh, uh, with um, uh, the MHRA. So what we need to do next, and this is the the key step, I guess, in the in the for the remainder of this year, is to file a clinical trial application. We've got a, a really great data set in preclinical. Uh, we've been in discussion with the regulators, and uh, but we need. To, a clinical trial application requires to be submitted. At that point, we'll be seeking the uh, support of the MHRA to begin clinical trials. Right. Uh, and so, as I say, and uh, ideally, we could be in, the, in, in treating patients by the end of next year. So, the clinical trial application will be filed this year, and we hope to have a uh, an answer by the end of this year from the regulators. Yeah. Wow. And so, like I say, you, you're not, you know, currently listed. It's an RTO involving. Uh... Amma Minerals, well, I know quite well. I used to interview the CEO there. Uh, so explain uh, the process here and, and when you're hoping to be uh, listed. When can people invest in, in Extruded? Yeah. Um, so at the moment, um, Amma Minerals is a, is a cash shell on, on AIM. They, they've sold their assets, so there's, there's some residual funding within there. So uh, we, we introduced them. We met and uh, agreed a way forward back in January. We signed heads of terms at the end of the month. Uh, last week, we signed the share purchase agreement to progress this forward. Um, given it's a cash shell, it does clearly we need to respect the the current MO shareholders. Uh, it, it will be their decision, and uh, they'll they'll have an opportunity to vote to hopefully to support the transaction, uh, the acquisition um, on the 29th of May. Yeah. So all been well with their support. The shares in MO will be renamed will be renamed Chrism Therapeutics Corporation, and our shares should be trading by the end of the month. Yeah, well, do you know what? Amber <laughs> Minerals, it's a very exciting technology here. And also, you know, it can benefit so many people, um, you know, outside the investing world in, in, in real world situations. Uh, so take us through them. I mean, we all, all know, so, you know the cancer, you know, there's so many people around the world suffer cancer. I don't know what the stats are, but there's one in three, one in two people will suffer from cancer throughout their life. So we know mm. it's a huge market, it's a big problem. And, you know, one of the biggest areas of investment in the medical world. So, but what's you know, the long term potential? for extruded pharmaceuticals so we've we've got certainly as you imagine you know we've got high hopes for the, te the technology we see it as a platform drug delivery company so brain tumor is our our, our first indication so but we, it's amenable to a wide range of drugs could, or, to be delivered locally and uh, we have experienced this at the moment you know in order to to get a rapid route through to commercialization an, an existing approved drug such as a can uh, is uh, is uh, is, a, is, a, is a good and a rapid way forward. We have done work on other novel targeted therapies as well in, in the uh, in, in our recent past, uh, but we can also add in additional drugs. We don't need to do chemo seed with a single drug. We can add other drugs to it. Uh, chemotherapy is often delivered uh, in in combination. But uh, brain cancer clearly is our focus. That's what we need to uh, uh, deliver on in, in in the first in the first instance. But other solid tumours really should also be amenable to the technology. And here we're thinking pancreatic, um, which has a, is, is a, a challenging indication, but also breast, prostate and bladder are others that we believe will, will be suitable. But we, we need to remain focused. You know, the, the funding we're going to have, we need to, to get into this this phase two trial. You know, the, the opportunity is significant, you know, from the health economic analysis we've had done. The market for UK, Europe and the US is probably some £1.7 billion pounds. And uh, you know, we we I feel we're, we're well placed to to to, to make a difference. Yeah. And uh, you know, and commercially, I think there's uh, you know, hoping we're going to garner some interest. We can commercially commercialize ourselves. I think there's clearly opportunities for co-marketing with with a pharma partner, and also to license the technology. And uh, that's uh, gives you a lot of reason to be optimistic. Yeah. No, that's very exciting, Dick. I, I was just thinking there. You were saying that chemo seed can be used in other in other parts of the you know, body, and I was thinking, yeah, just with the same drug on different cancers, in different parts of the body. But then you say it can be used for all different kinds of drugs and even combinations of drugs. That's yes. a huge option, option, optionality there, isn't it? It, it is. It is. But and what what and our plan is that the the revenues from the the brain tumor indication will then start to build that development infrastructure. Which which is uh, what we're needing to achieve 
in the uh, in the, in the short to medium term. Yeah, well, I've got in my head a little uh, sort of uh, thing size of a rice grain, and uh, literally that it's delivery system, and sort of have to remember that. So, like I said, what you put through that system. It, yeah. it was it's a multitude of options and uh, what it you're is. trying to cure again a multitude of options yeah the direction we've had from the 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 neurosurgeons at uh, the queen elizabeth you know we you know it, it is it is a, it is readily deliverable you know one of the questions today is they've worked on us we're already building a clinical protocol how do you actually insert the these seeds dur during the surgical procedure and um you know we work with, with the, there's a limited time window in which to do so and actually we have a, a methodology you know, and a protocol in development now uh, to, to do that so and what we can do in the brain will absolutely be amenable to other solid tumors and that's yeah. the and that that's the the, the amazing just the, the the scope we have we have here i think is yeah. uh uh is remarkable but but you know there's there's that Small that's steps the first. way <laughs> we've got some short-term priorities yeah. you know we i'm very clear we need we need to deliver on yeah, exactly. Uh, prove that out. And then, of course, the the, the potential is, is, is matched as going forward. Um, Andrew, thank you very much for coming on. It's very exciting. And, uh, you know, good luck with the uh, listing. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up in the not too distant future. Thank you very much. No, I look forward to it, Justin. It's been a pleasure talking to you. And uh, I look forward to giving you an update uh, in, uh, in the, in, uh, as, uh, as, we, as we move forward.